So the four lines come in, and you can see water flow in there. They go into one of these two tanks here, one at a time. Right now, the one on the right is filling up. When it gets full, then it has a sensor that toggles and this thing moves over and starts loading up just like the clothes this. tank. Just like that. And the water goes out of the one that just got full. Now this one is filling up. It goes from this outside where you can hear the motor a few minutes ago, it's loading sap from the tanks onto a truck. Out here, tap lines from the tree go into a lateral line. There are lateral lines just all over the place connecting the trees to a main line. The main lines, there are four of them that connect all the trees throughout these woods. And the four main lines come into this building. When they're collected in here, they're sent from this little building out to these tanks. And there was somewhere around 250 gallons in here. They'd already started moving some today. But with the motor, they pump it right out here into a tank in the truck. From there, it goes over to the evaporators. Okay, let's see if I can tell you what I don't know but what I'm learning. We brought uh, this full of sap that was about 250, 60 pound, uh, gallons, and they take it through a hose into here. This is a reverse osmosis machine. Reverse osmosis tries to separate pure water from junk water. As far as an RO is concerned, maple syrup sap is junk water. So it forces the water with these uh, motors through these membrane filters and it begins to separate. The pure water collects and goes through here into these tanks, whereas the junk water, which in this case is uh, sugar water, goes through here and out and goes into the next room. Before I go in there, I just want to say that there are some cycles of how to clean the system to make sure that it doesn't hang on to the crystals of uh, the sap, uh, especially like shutting down for the night. So you have to go through and this tank was full of pure water and we had to use about half of it to clean this system. This is just good drinking water. And when it comes to the sugar water, it comes in, you can run it into here and run a test. We put a, a cup underneath and ran some and it was sweet water. But this line will take it into the boiling room. Now before I go there, I'm gonna show you something from the outside. Okay, through the year, Harvey and company are cutting firewood. They store it here in the back of the barn. Uh, this is in effect his sugar shack. Look at the sparks coming out. When they're burning the wood inside, they put a fan on it to make it as hot as possible. And by doing that, it forces out some of these sparks, which fortunately have never started a fire anywhere after all these years of doing it, uh, which leaves very little ash in the firebox. Now I'll go into the, the boiling room. So the water that comes in from the RO or the reverse osmosis, it sends the junk water, which is really sugar water up into this tank 
this tank is feeding down the hose to go through this float. This float manages how much sugar water goes into the pan to be boiling. And that way they don't want too much, don't want too little, and it needs to stay about where that black mark is. You never want it to go down to the red because there are flues inside that run the whole length of the pan and the fire is being shot by the fan to push fire right into the tank uh, through the flues and give as much hot surface as possible to make things boil. So the float keeps that at a, a good uh, depth. Now that's the first fire pan. It's boiling, it's nearly becoming syrup in there. And as it gets ready, it comes to another float. This float is regulating how much sugar water is going into the second pan, which is kind of a finishing pan. And this finishing can only be at a certain depth. If it's too deep, you're not gonna, you're just gonna be boiling, boiling. If you keep it lower, it's gonna finish the sugar water off and become actual syrup. So you just watch the boiling going on in there. The hood basically is collecting steam and shooting the steam up to a second chimney just to keep it from being too steamy in here. Uh, earlier, before we put that on, the steam had filled the, the room down to the top level of the wood. It was really thick. So having that hood helps. But this is the firebox and the fan. So the fan is pushing air into the firebox, which goes up and heats for that pan, for the other pan. And I think it's time to put more firewood in. I heard the alarm go off. Brian's turned the fan off. That makes it safe to open. Just keep chucking in more wood. The timer has us going about every 10 minutes, sometimes 15, but probably 10 is more common. Just chuck in more wood, chuck in more wood. Load it up. He's gonna to check to see that we're at the right level inside. Assuming that's staying at the right level, over here is a gauge. It's gone around the horn once already, and it's right at boiling, 212 degrees. When it gets to 219, which is where that number seven is, we got syrup. And that'll get poured off into this pan, which just collects it because as the syrup is coming out, the float is letting more sugar water come in here and you can't let it run dry, ruin the pan. So it's a matter of sending it here to capture it. From here, it goes into a filter which force feeds it with membranes that look like that. And that just is good for making sure there's quality, purity in the, the syrup. And then from there, it goes into what will be that gizmo over here. And it's from here that they load the bottles or whatever they're going to store it in. Harvey, is that a close approximation to it? There you go, you fill it up. <laughs> Over here is a little test. You put the sugar water in there, and this is... It's a hydrometer. 
a hydrometer so that if it floats up to the right uh, measurement, then you know you've got syrup. We're gonna just let's just it. do this. We're not there yet, but let's test it. You did that once earlier today, and that thing wouldn't float at all. So we're at 55, and we need to get it up to 62 on this measurement, which is where that red line is. So when it gets there, it floats by itself, it's syrup. It's not syrup yet, but it's getting real close. It's getting close, and it's got the nice amber color to it now. Good. Now Brian's over there, he's getting supper ready because right now there are hot dogs boiling in the syrup and we'll take those hot dogs off and be eating them here before too long. Sure takes a lot of wood. Takes a lot of patience, but I can tell you it takes a lot of skill. Here's a look at the whole thing, the firebox, the fan. The first pan with the float feeding into it. A float on the other side that feeds into the second pan. And it's that second pan that brings out the syrup. Pretty cool operation. What do you have, Harvey? Hey, we got supper. All right. Hot dogs and maple syrup. Well done. <laughs> oh. We have syrup. What? Mm-hmm. And there's the end product. <laughs> 